Well, good morning, everybody. Welcome to Harbour Church. Great to see you. The sun is shining. We are together in God's presence. We're going to start with a song immediately. So if you want to stand up as you maybe continue to find a seat, we're going to sing about the goodness of God. Thanks, Dave. I want to scream. morning everyone how are you good to see you and what a great way to start this morning that he is good let me read to you Psalm 100 because it's very short and very good so I think that's a good combination personally shout with joy to the Lord all the earth worship the Lord with gladness come before him singing with joy that's what we've been doing acknowledge that the Lord is God he made us and we are his yeah i thought that was good news too we belong to him we are his people the sheep of his pasture enter into his gates with thanksgiving go into his courts with praise give thanks to him and praise his name for the lord is good well done his unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation welcome along to harbour church this morning and it is so good to be together in his presence isn't it you could have been doing something else you could have been at home still in bed watching another episode of the crown on netflix you could have been peeling the vegetables but you're not you're here and i don't know what your motivation was for being here but whatever it was you're here and you're with a whole load of other people who are also here because they wanted to be here and maybe you're thinking I'm not even sure if I wanted to be here. Well, you're here anyway, and we're together in God's presence. So let's sing some great songs of worship together. Later on, Sarah's going to be our preacher, and we're really looking forward to that. And it's just going to be a really, really brilliant morning together. So whether or not you thought you were going to be here, whether you didn't know you were going to be here, you are here. So let's praise God together. Let's raise the roof, which is quite high above us, really, isn't it? Don't look too much, though. You might see some cobwebs. And uh, we are going going to be praising God together this morning because it's great to be here. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you are good. Lord, thank you that many things we can say are good in our lives, but actually, do you know what? Only you are truly good. And we thank you that we have gathered together with one another in your presence to sing to you, to hear about you, to be challenged, to be inspired. And Lord, we pray that by the power of your Holy Spirit, you would be here amongst us just for the next moments that we are together here. We thank you that you are good. Thanks, Dave. With a cry of praise, my heart will proclaim. You 
Yeah. 
welcome you with praise. We welcome you with praise. You know, if we engage our hearts, our minds, our whole bodies and truly say, we welcome you. We welcome you, Heavenly Father. We welcome you, Lord Jesus. Oh, we welcome you, Holy Spirit. We welcome you here today and we welcome you with praise, with open hearts. Those are the most powerful words we can almost say this morning. You are welcome here. You are welcome here. We recognize that you're here already, but how powerful it is when, when we embrace it and we welcome you and we say, come. welcome you. You know, we've sung it together. Maybe just spend a moment now. Just you and God just say, I welcome you here. I welcome you here this morning. You are 
the King has come, divinity in Christ, creator of the world.
the way by which we have to say he's the savior of the world yes so continue to sing that song is that on yeah I think it is yeah we're going to continue to sing that in just a moment but Sue's just going to come and share something with us I've learned over the years to make sure I listen to Sue Tim thinks the same but for different reasons you know but uh, this lady hears from God so let's hear what she's got to say to us thank you I, I've been um, I've been sitting there and I just I can't get away from this word and I think you know I sit there and I say Lord I really don't want this to be from me I really want it to be from you and um, in the week I read uh, in the Bible it said and you were once darkness I thought my goodness was I really <laughs> was I darkness once uh, but now you are light you know the Holy Spirit has come into you and you are light and now I'm going to go straight from here to heaven because I've come alive in Christ I mean it is the most wonderful I just got this revelation I just want to share it with you this morning you know that we are alive in Christ because of the Spirit the Spirit has come alive in us which means now we will go straight to heaven because we are alive we're alive already in the Spirit and we are no longer darkness Christ the Lord Overcame the darkness, he's alive, death has been defeated, Christ the Lord, overcame the darkness, he's alive, death has been defeated, and he raised, ruler of the Messiah, 
Thanks, Sue. What a great message that is. He, he's alive, so we are alive. That's why he's the saviour of the world, because he is the greatest. You know, we have many discussions, don't we, about who's the greatest superhero, you know, and, you know, is it Superman, is it Batman, or, you know, whoever it is. But actually, the one who overcomes death, I mean, he has to be the greatest, because that's the ultimate full stop, isn't it, for most of us. Please be seated, and uh, we're going to turn our attention to communion. We're going to be uh, sharing the, the bread and the juice together in just a few moments. But uh, a few months ago, um, I went over to Northern Ireland uh, for work and uh, went over to Belfast. And um, on the way back, of course, uh, and on the way there, you, you have to go through the airport security, don't you? And um, it's never very nice, is it, going through airport security? Uh, even when you know you've done nothing wrong, <laughs> for some reason you start to feel like perhaps you have done something wrong and um, so we were queuing up uh, at Belfast airport to come back uh, over to England and um, I uh, had to take a lot of uh, radio equipment with me and uh, you'll know that if you take any electrical equipment onto the actual you know cabin part of the plane you have to get it all out yeah so um, Anna had come with me my wife and we had to take all the stuff out and put it on the conveyor belt so we had leads and microphones and switches and dials all these type of things which for some reason I started thinking looked like a bomb I don't know why and I uh, started thinking this is really bad uh, we had to get it all out and uh, it all went through in lots of different you know grey trays you know the grey tray oh yeah so it's all going through and then of course we begin to line up and then we each have to go through the arch the arch of doom and you think oh dear okay is this going to be all right so uh uh, Anna decided, I put Anna in front of me, you know, because obviously that's important, you know, let, let the ladies go first and all that, yeah. So uh, the people of you went through, fine, they went through, Anna went through, fine, I walked through, beep, 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 <laughs> no, what's happened? And uh, they said, oh, can you, can you step aside? I mean, is there a more, you know, humiliating term ever? Can you step aside? Everyone else continues to go through. So I'm sort of standing there. By now, I'm seeing Anna down at the end of the conveyor belt, frantically trying to get all these trays uh, with all this equipment piling up at her at the end. And I'm just standing there. And uh, the lady said to me, um, because we're in Northern Ireland, everyone's lovely. Yeah, so she was actually still quite nice to me. And uh, she said, um, oh, I, I don't really know what, what's happening. Um, you know, have you... Have you got some kind of like medical belt on or something? And I said, ah, yeah, I have, because uh, I'm waiting for a, a hernia operation, which um, is coming quite soon, actually, thankfully. But, um, and I said, oh, yeah, I have. And I suddenly thought to myself, oh, of all the airports to be wearing something strapped to me, probably, probably Belfast is not really the one. So I'm standing there, and I think, this is really not good. And uh, she said, oh, um, well, we need to just check. So can you walk through this other thing? So I walked through, and it all started going off again. And uh, they had to go and get somebody. Um, and then somebody came back again and had to explain what happened. They said, oh, um, would you be able to take it off? And I said, what, here? <laughs> and uh, they said, yeah. And I said, no, no, I wouldn't be able to do that here. No, for obvious reasons, which I won't go into. Um, and... Uh, they said, oh, okay, well, in which case, we'll, we'll just have to swab you here then. Thinking, what? Uh, so they got this little swabbing thing, and I, I had to stand whilst everyone looked at me, who was still going through without setting anything off, of course. And then there's a person swabbing me like this. <laughs> well, I stood, it was a very, very embarrassing experience. Uh, anyway, needless to say, obviously, they eventually let me go all the way through. And uh, we were fine, and we got on the plane. But not, a really, not an experience I'd like to uh, remember, really, and uh, not one I'd like to repeat. But sometimes... We think that as we approach God, that's what he's doing. That he's set up some kind of archway which he's going to try and catch us out with. And you know what? It's far from the truth. You know, earlier I said uh, maybe you didn't even know you were coming today and here you are. Maybe one of the reasons you didn't want to come is because you thought, well, if I go, I'm going to be caught out. You know, I've done X, Y and Z this week and I'll walk through those doors over there and it's going to go, boo, woo, woo, woo. And God's going to be pointing his finger down at me and then everyone's going to be looking and it's going to be really, really embarrassing. And I'm going to be full of shame. But actually, the opposite is so true because of what Jesus has done for us, he's taken away all of that. 
not because of anything that we have done, but because of everything that he has done. The Apostle Paul in Ephesians uh, says this in Ephesians 2, once you were dead because of your disobedience and your many sins, you used to live in sin just like the rest of the world, obeying the devil, the commander of the powers of the unseen world. All of us used to live that way, following the passionate desires and inclinations of our sinful nature. And by our very nature, we were subject to God's anger, just like everyone else. And that's what we kind of think of when we think, oh, we're going to set off the thing and God's going to catch us out. But then this is what it says in verse 4. But God is so rich in mercy and he loved us so much that even though we were dead because of our sins, he gave us life when he raised us with Christ from the dead. So he made us alive. And so yes, my sin and your sin, the things that we've done this week, the things that we've done this morning would indeed set off the divine woo woo woo. But actually, Jesus has stepped in for us and said, no, no, don't worry about that. I've got it covered. I've got it sorted. We don't need to feel that shame. Maybe we feel a little bit of guilt for the things that we've done wrong, and that's correct, because now, as we come to the table, we can ask for forgiveness, and we can say sorry, but we don't need to feel shame when we feel bad about actually who we are. We just need to feel bad about the things that we've done, because they're not right. We've upset people, we've perhaps damaged ourselves. But the shame part, no, that's dealt with. And then the forgiveness part is also dealt with. As we come to the table today, isn't that just so amazing? We don't need to avoid God anymore. Perhaps you're watching online this morning and you didn't come because you thought, mm, do you know what, actually I'd rather not be there because of what's happened this week. Let's not be like that. Let's come before God this morning and receive that forgiveness and that shame can be lifted from us. That is what it is all about. So we're going to carry on singing. We're going to share communion together. If you'd like to come and help me, that would be great. We're going to just have some people stationed at the front today. And then uh, you can come forward and receive the bread and the juice. If you don't want to come forward, then, you know, get someone else to do it for you and they can bring it back to your chair where you're sitting. But if uh, some people could just come up now and help me with that, just have a couple of people over here and a couple of people over here. That'd be great just to help us serve and uh, just stand at the front. And you know what? We're going to be experiencing God's forgiveness that shame being lifted from us not because of anything we've done but because of everything that God has done for us already isn't that just so amazing just maybe a couple more people can just come up and help us on this side over here just so we don't have to wander all over the place that'd be great thank you and we're going to sing and we're going to receive God's forgiveness this morning isn't that just so amazing thanks Dave to you let my heart be changed renewed flowing from the grace that I found in you Lord I come to know
we thank you this morning. We thank you that you have forgiven us. We thank you, God, that you are not a God who is trying to catch us out or trip us up or get the lights of shame flashing and pointing at us. Instead, Lord, you want to forgive us. You want to love us. And then the most amazing thing, as we've just sung in that song, you would then have us soar with you. Not just to have a a mediocre existence after we find your forgiveness, but Lord, you would have us soaring with you, the best life possible. Jesus, you promise us life and life to the full, not some mediocre existence. Lord, when we're tangled up in our own sin and shame, it's just so mediocre. It's just so rubbish. But God, when we receive your forgiveness, we can soar with you. And right now, I just want to encourage you. This morning here at Harbour Church, perhaps for the very first time, if you want to say, do you know what, I'm done. I'm done with that sin and shame. I'm done with worrying about those lights going off and the alarm bells ringing. I want to receive Jesus' forgiveness. I want to live under the power of his Holy Spirit so that I can soar with him. You know, this morning, perhaps it would be helpful for you to physically do something about that. Of course, you can pray quietly in your own heart. God is only ever a prayer away. Isn't that just so amazing? But perhaps it would help you just to make a kind of physical movement. And so perhaps you could just raise your hand this morning if that's you. For the very first time, you want to accept Jesus as the Lord of your life. You want to soar with him. Perhaps it would help you just to raise your hand this morning for the very first time and say, do you know what? That's what I want. That's what I want in my life. Not the mediocre life of sin and shame, but a life where I soar with you. And perhaps you're like me, where you want to put up your hand this morning because you want to say, God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry for the things I've messed up this week. I'm sorry for this morning. I'm sorry for the last hour. God, and maybe you want to lift your hand with mine this morning and say, God, I'm sorry. Thank you for your forgiveness daily. Thank you for your forgiveness hourly that we can experience life and life to the full. So if you want to raise your hand with me, then please do. And let's receive that forgiveness from the Holy Spirit. The shame can go in our life. Thank you, Jesus, for your forgiveness. Thank you for your clean start, your clean slate. What an amazing thing to discover once again or for the very first time today that you want us to soar with you. Lord, we thank you. We thank you. Dave, can we sing that bit of the song again? Please, thank you. So those of you that know, he's quite poorly. Um, he's got uh, mesothelioma, so asbestos cancer in his lungs. He's had it for a while, um, but he was doing better. Um, and then two Sundays ago, we got a call basically from Andy's mum saying, he's really unwell, um, he's refusing medical attention, but we think he's got an infection. 
He's had a high temperature for four days. He's refusing to go to the doctors. It was Sunday night. Can you please like come down because we don't know what to do? Um, so they, he went down, they called the ambulance. Um, the paramedics got there about nine o'clock. They said, you've got sepsis, you need to come into hospital. You've, you, you've already got cancer, you've got sepsis. Um, his dad said, no, I want to go to bed. I, I just want to go to bed. I want this pain to stop. Um, no, I'm not going in. Um, they said, if you don't go in, you will be dead by the morning. And he said, no, I don't want to go in. Two hours of the paramedics trying to get him in. They can't force someone in. Um, Andy trying to get his dad in. Everyone begging him to go into that ambulance because if he didn't, he would be there in the morning. But I think he was so poorly, he just wanted to go to bed. Um, Andy came back home at midnight. I'm sorry. <laughs> And we just thought, I mean, if he's alive in the morning, he probably won't be alive for much longer. And we both just sat up and prayed. And we'd never prayed together, because those of you that know, Andy isn't a Christian. But we just prayed. <laughs> and it was just like, please don't let the last time Andy sees his dad be trying to drag him into an ambulance poorly. Anyway, we, I finally... Um, Andy had, was starting his new job the next day. So we were like, we're just going to have to like, try and sleep. We're both praying. I think we both went to sleep praying. I don't remember the time I went to sleep. Anyway, woke up in the morning and Andy had a text from his mum. She said, David woke up at 2.30 in the morning. He woke up and he said, I need to go to hospital. So they called the paramedics and the paramedic on call was Aidan Fudge, who was my cousin. <laughs> And he noticed the name come up because obviously Andy's got his dad's name and he'd been at our wedding and he thought, I know that man, I know that house, I'm going. And Andy's dad was still obviously really didn't want to go to hospital, but he was in so much pain. And Aidan said, you're, you're part of my family, I'm Nikki's cousin. And obviously immediately the whole family calmed down, took him to hospital. His pump full of everything, he was on all the machines for like two days, pump full of everything. Um, He's alive. <laughs> yeah, and not only is he alive, he's come back out again. So he's alive, he's well. When he got to hospital, the sepsis had caused his kid, like the beginning of kidney failure. He'd had a heart attack because his heart was struggling to pump. Obviously, he didn't know. Um, and he had pneumonia as well. So, I mean, he wouldn't have lasted the night. Um, I just... I wanted to share that because we believe that was a miracle. Um, absolutely. And in the morning, Andy went to work and, you know, he got all the... F I mean, he looked terrible. <laughs> but he went on his first day of his new job and, you know, he got all the, the forms to sign in. He said, Nikki, I'll put myself down as Christian because what happened was a miracle. <laughs> miracle. <laughs> so I wanted to say thank you because I know that lots of you have been praying. <laughs> for him <laughs> for a long time and I just wanted to say thank you thank you <laughs> wow brilliant what a story that is so good I don't think I've ever heard of someone becoming a Christian by filling in a form I mean that is that is amazing that is so good what a story absolutely fantastic wow I hope that encouraged you because I mean that was that was just full of good news wasn't it the power of his love we've just been singing about wow absolutely fantastic well Sarah is our preacher and soon we're going to be hearing from her this morning and uh, really really looking forward to that uh, a couple of things just to let you know about uh, before that first of all I don't normally have this moustache under my nose so uh, just to point that out a few people have been like looking at me like what's going on uh, I've been doing Movember and it's definitely coming off on Thursday because Anna won't kiss me unless it's gone so 30 days without a kiss is more than enough for me um, but uh, just to say if you did want to sponsor me because it's all for men's mental health and uh, men's cancer and stuff so uh, there's a few of us doing it at the uh, school I work for so head to the Movember website you can see uh, how to give on there so uh, yeah it will be gone Sarah said I look like I'm in three Three men and a little lady or three men and a baby yeah um what was he called peter yeah that's him that's him yeah 
Um, just a couple of things to let you know about. Uh, we've got a birthday in the house. Oh, yes. Uh, Bonnie. Bonnie is two. How is Bonnie two? Because I thought she'd just been born, and then I had a shock. Jack also thought she'd just been born, but no. Look, here she come in. Bonnie, are you going to come to the front? Yes, Bonnie, come to the front. Look at that. Look at that. Let's... Woohoo! Let's look at something much more cute than my moustache. Look at that. Two years old. You've got cars. Glad to see that. Excellent. We're going to sing Happy Birthday. Is that all right, Dave? Take it away. Happy Birthday. Brilliant, brilliant. Okay, uh, MJ is going to come up in just a second, tell us about a few things that we need to know about. Uh, let me point you in the direction of this evening because uh, there is a prayer meeting all about mental health uh, with Churches Together, which is happening here. That's at six o'clock. Uh, and then coming up this week as well, if you look on the back of the bulletin, you'll see there is a men's film night. And uh, before we get all crazy with the busyness of Christmas, uh, coming together on Wednesday uh, to watch the best Christmas film ever, Die Hard. Hashtag discuss. Uh, so uh, that's happening. Uh, details on the back of the bulletin. MJ. Brilliant. Thanks, Josh. Well, then on Friday, we have got our ladies' Christmas event, and I believe there is a slide. Um, Caleb, if you're able to put that up, would be wonderful. So on Friday, we're going to be gathering here, ladies, and um, we're going to be in the main church hall in here, and it's going to be set up beautifully because it's also going to be Christmassy because I know that Dave and Hayley are going to be busy this week getting the place decorated. So we're going to be enjoying the Chinese together. We're going to be launching into Advent. It's the 1st of December on Friday. So we're going to have um, Mary Robbins is coming. She's going to be leading us some carols and candlelight. We're going to have um, a short th thought and word and a message to just help us prepare as we head into this beautiful season. So it's going to be a wonderful evening. If you're not yet booked on ladies, please see Miri today. Give us a wave, Miri. I'm sure we all know you by now, but there's Miri. Please go and chat with her. Um, it's £10 for the event. However, if money is something that would stop you from coming, please come and chat to me because we would love you to be able to be there. Um, so make sure you get booked on with me. Uh, excuse me, with Miri, um, and that's going to be a fantastic time together. Also, I wanted to share this morning, very exciting, that we have got two opportunities coming up for a mission trip. That deserves a bit of a woo! Very excited. So, firstly, finally, we have got a date with Dave Truss in Romania for another trip to Romania, which is very exciting. So, we are looking at February 2025. So not February in a few months. That would be a little bit crazy. Don't think we'd quite manage that. But um, so just over a year's time in the February half term. So it would be around the 15th to the 23rd um, that we'll be taking a trip, uh, a team from Harbour over to Dave and Rachel in Romania to work with the FMN charity over there. Um, at the moment, we haven't got many other details other than the date. Um, we're still working out how big that team will be um, and what it will look like. But this is a trip that we want to say is open to everyone, um, whether you want to come as a family, um, whether you want to come as an individual, as a couple. So this is open to to anyone within the church. We at some point will arrange a time to meet with anyone interested, but we just want to sow that seed um, this morning and say, you know, take some time, um, pray and see if that's what God is wanting you to do and to be a part of. Also, there is another mission trip that is being planned by SKCC and they are doing a trip to Burkina Faso. Um, and that's also February 2025, so in that half-term week. Theirs is a little bit earlier and longer. It goes from the 13th to the 23rd, and it's going to be a trip to go out and to start to build an additional three classrooms because they need more room for the kids. So there is that opportunity as well. And tonight, 
There is a meeting at SKCC's building. I'm looking to see the time. 7.30 p.m. tonight, there is a meeting. So if you're interested in finding out a bit more about the Burkina Faso trip, then head along there, find out a bit more. Um, we're really excited. Mission is, is great. I would encourage you, if you've never been on a mission trip, go on a mission trip. Um, it's the most incredible thing to do. Um, and here we are with two different opportunities, a trip to Romania, a trip to Burkina Faso. So be thinking about that, be praying about that, and seeing if that's something for you. And if you want to chat anymore, come and chat with me or Dave, and we'd love to talk to you a bit more about the Romania one especially. Um, and more details will follow on that one. Thanks. Thanks, MJ. Right, the Carters are in for the uh, Romania. We're on. We're your first sign up, all right? There you go. That's all right, Anna, isn't it? Yeah, she's just nodding at me. Good. Um, last time we went, it was just before the pandemic. So uh, we, we were in the airport, and there was like, we saw people with masks on. And we thought, ho, 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 look at you, silly person with masks on. <laughs> and there was like, oh, everybody's wearing a mask a couple of months later. Oh, dear. Uh, so, yeah, uh, it's going to be good. Right, okay. That is. Uh, Good, we're going to hear from Sarah in just a moment. Let's have a quick break. Kids are going to leave us. Um, and uh, just an opportunity to say hello to someone if you came in late. And uh, then we'll be hearing from God's Word together. Brilliant. Well, it's really good to hand over to Sarah, who is our preacher. I've, I think I've been handing over to Sarah in meetings for over 25 years. I, I was sitting thinking about it earlier, and I, I probably it's probably more actually, yeah. Um, but it's always always great to hear from Sarah, and uh, she hears from God, which is why it's great to hear from her. Um, so let's pray. God, we thank you for your word. Thank you that we've already heard from your word today and we're going to hear from it again and we pray for Sarah now as you guide her with the things that you have prepped her with we pray that all of us would have ears to hear you speaking to us through her Lord we pray we wouldn't be distracted by things coming up later on today or whatever else is going on but we would really be able to just tune in now to hear you speaking directly to us amen great good morning everyone if you've got a Bible, would you turn to Matthew chapter 7? Um, yeah, or follow it on your phone, whichever way. Um, I'm just going to read the last few verses. These are very familiar words if you've been in church for a while. And uh, certainly if you, as a child, went to Sunday school or went to church, you may have even sung a song around this, this story that I'm about to read. The wise man built his, just checking, the wise man built his, the wise man built his, and the, oh, come on, you're good, a bit louder, and the, oh, I'm impressed, I'd forgotten that till just now, <laughs> and the, the rain came down, and the, some of you are liking this way too much, just saying. You're liking it way too much. If anyone wants to leave right now, you can. I understand. Matthew chapter 7. Hmm. Lord Jesus, thank you for the songs that some of us grew up with, but may we feel the impact of your words more than a little ditty that remains in our head. Amen. If it's just a little ditty tune, we've missed the whole point. So may the Lord Jesus help us this morning. Matthew chapter 7 and verse 20. Oh, do you know, I so need glasses. Is it 24? I think it's 24. Oh, man, that is bad. I'm really looking at that again. I can't see it. I need a large print Bible because I don't really want to wear glasses. <laughs> Jesus has just preached the most phenomenal sermon. 
Did you know he's the best teacher ever? I'm going I'm, I'm to go slow today. I don't have a lot to say, but I want some stuff just to really land. You will not find a better teacher in all the world, in all of history, than the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah. Come on, some of you, just respond to me. Maybe it's been a while since you've just said, Jesus, I acknowledge you as my teacher. Jesus has just taught this incredible sermon. We call it the Sermon on the Mount. He's on a mountain. And you'd, you'd do well to look at it regularly. You'd do well to read these chapters. You know, you want to know who Jesus is? Read his words. And right at the end of this incredible teaching where crowds have flocked to him, he says this. If you want to, you can read it aloud with me if that helps you to retain it. He says, anyone who listens to my teaching and follows it is wise. Like a person who builds a house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents and the floodwaters rise and the winds beat against that house. He's describing an almighty storm. It won't collapse because it's built on bedrock. But anyone who hears my teaching and doesn't obey it is foolish. Like a person who builds a house on sand, when the rains and the floods come and the winds beat against that house, it will collapse with a mighty crash. When Jesus had finished saying these things, the crowds were amazed at his teaching, for he taught with real authority quite unlike the teachers of religious law. We have in this little story, you know, Jesus told so many stories. Here's another one. Jesus is basically finishing his sermon by saying, if you do what I say, you're wise. If you don't, you're foolish. Jesus didn't mince his words, did he? Like, I wonder how you would respond today if I looked you in the eye and, 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 and just said to you, you're a fool if you don't do what Jesus says. But that is what Jesus says, does he not? That's what he says. But that's not the kind of language we feel comfortable with today. But Jesus literally says, if you do what I say, you're wise. If you don't, you're a fool. Just let that land a little bit. Jesus is saying this for a reason. And so then what he does, he does what he's best at doing, which is telling stories, because he wants everyone to get this. So he just says, you're wise like a... So this, isn't a, this didn't actually happen, in case you didn't know that. I know the song feels very real, but it didn't actually happen. It's a story that Jesus is telling. And he's, and he's just trying to illustrate the point. And he says, he says, if you listen to what I say and do it... It's not just hearing. You can sit in church your whole life and hear the word of God. But if you don't do it, if you don't act on it, if you don't live according to it, and really that's all I want to be talking about this morning in the few minutes I've got, are we living according to the word of God? And Jesus says, if you live according to my word, you're wise. Like a man, like a person who built their house on a rock, on a good, strong foundation, If you don't, if you hear my words, if you sit in church every week, if you can quote every word of this book, if you know it from cover to cover, if you have even studied it, but you do not live it, you do not act on it, it is not a part of your life, you're not doing what it says. Jesus at another time says, I'll know if you really are my followers because you will obey what I say. I wonder how many of us give a sense of being a follower of Jesus. Yes, I'm a Christian, I'm a Christian, but we don't obey what the Word says. And we wonder why then, when the storms hit, we go crashing down. Jesus gives us the answer here. It's not rocket science. He says, will you obey what I say? That rhymes, doesn't it? Do you want to say that? Will you obey what I say? I'm already off my notes. I don't know if you noticed that some, some people didn't like what Jesus said, did they? I haven't recorded it. I haven't read it as part of this, but I'm just, people didn't like what he said, and so they began to leave him. It's the same today, is it not? People today are still leaving churches because they don't like what he says. People today are choosing to walk away from Jesus because they don't like what he says. The message has not changed. 
I find it fascinating that Jesus let them go. I wonder if too many preachers and church leaders, and I'm talking directly to myself now, chase after people when Jesus would say, let them go. They have a choice. They can either follow or not follow. They can either obey or disobey. It's not my job as a preacher to chase you if you don't want to obey. I'm really off my notes now. Jesus didn't chase people. He said, are you, are you with me or not? Jesus' teaching was harsh. It wasn't easy. We live in a day and age today where the teaching of Jesus is, is difficult. It's controversial. It, it doesn't fit the culture of the world that we live in right now. But Jesus says, will you not just hear my words? Will you obey them? If you obey them, you are like a wise person. If you don't, Jesus says you're foolish doesn't mince his words. I just noticed as I've been looking at this story this week that this story describes two builders, two foundations, two outcomes. There's two of everything, two, 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 but there's one storm. Two builders, two different foundations, two outcomes. There's this, this whole parable is a comparison. It's a comparison. Here's one, here's the other. Here's one, here's the other. Here's one, here's the other. The one thing that is the same is the storm. One storm. And as I began to just mull on that, I just realized this, that the real issue at hand in this little story that Jesus is telling us wasn't the storm. The real issue at hand is the foundation. The real issue at hand is the choices of the builders the outcome wasn't the result of the storm. It was a result of the foundation. And too often, we blame the storm. The storms in our life, the things that happen, I don't know what you're in right now, but the reality is, if you want to take any comfort from Jesus' words, it's this, storms will come. I, I've sat in too many sermons as a teenager where I was almost led to believe that if I follow Jesus, there won't be any storms. That is not what Jesus said. He never said, come to me and it'll be easy. In fact, he said the opposite. I've been rereading just this week, just in my own personal, I'd like to say devotions. They feel more like wrestles, if I'm honest with you. I've been rereading Jesus' words when he says that the path of following Jesus is narrow. <laughs> It's not a wide road. He says the wide road leads to destruction, and that's what most people are on. But actually, the narrow path leads to life. And then Jesus says, and few find it. Do you know there are scriptures that I just boggle my brain? I don't understand them. But sometimes I wonder, after I've wrestled with them, if Jesus just says, Sarah, would you just respect them and obey them and come under them and understand the authority of scripture? Because believe it or not, I'm not God. And I know you're pretty good, but you're not God either. And I wonder if our daily prayer needs to be, I'm not God, you are. And I surrender to your word. I surrender to you. It's one storm, and too many of us blame the storms. We think our circumstances and the way that, you know, it's all come crashing down. It's the storm's fault. If that storm hadn't happened, I mean, I, I, I've said that in life, and I don't think I'm the only one here, right? If that hadn't happened, I wouldn't be where I am today. I wouldn't feel like this. I wouldn't be in this mess. It wouldn't feel like devastation. And yet Jesus seems to indicate in these few words that the storm is not the issue. And I just wonder if this morning some of us need to just take our eyes and go, whoa, have I been blaming the storm? God, I'm sorry, actually, do I need to look a little bit more inward? Do I actually need to look at where I'm building? Do I actually need to look at some of the practices in my life? Do I actually need to reassess some of the things I believe, some of the foundational truths that I'm building my life on? And can I gently say to you, as pastorally as I can, some of you don't even know what you believe anymore. And do you know why you don't believe what anymore? It's because you stopped reading the Bible. You're more interested in what social media is saying or what this preacher over here is saying. Do you know, please don't believe everything I say. Please, I beg you. 
Search the scriptures for yourself. Ask the Holy Spirit to bring revelation. You are a follower of Jesus as much as I am. But I want to suggest that as we neglect this book, we are in danger. We are in so much danger. We must not neglect this most precious book. Some of us grew up in church cultures where it became so legalistic to read this book and all oh, the enemies having a field day with this. So we think that we're freer because we're not reading the book now because we're free. I'm not legalistic anymore and the enemy's having a field day laughing at us. We've lost our power source because we've forgotten the word of God. So I'm not here today to say to you how often you need to read this book every day. It's not about that. Jesus says you can hear it every day and still not do it. If I have one message for us this morning, Harbour Church, it's this. Can we resubmit ourselves to the authority of Scripture? Can we resubmit ourselves to say, God, I'm going to honor your word. I don't understand it all. Do you know, if you had one page of this Bible, if you had one story, you could still choose to obey it and be standing on a rock. It's not the amount you consume, it's your response to it. And too many of us are consumed with the amount. Have I read it in a year? Have I read it in a year? We need to get over some of that stuff. The question is, are you surrendered to it? Does it take the highest place in your life? Is your heart towards God? I want to honor your word. If your word says it, so that when somebody comes along and reveals scripture to you, your response rather than fighting against it is, God, yeah, I'm going to surrender to your word. It might cost me everything, but I'm going to surrender to what your word says. Is anyone hearing me this morning? One storm. The outcome of these two builders was not the result of the storm. Jesus says this, whoever hears my words and obeys them, whoever practices what I say, I think the question that Jesus is really asking us is this. Who, what are you building on? You building your life right now on the values of the world? Or are you building your life on the values of the kingdom of God? You say, so I don't know what they are. Stick around church. Read this book. Let's discover them together. Read the Sermon on the Mount. That would be a good place to start. What are you building your life on? Are you building your life on the promises of this world? or on the promises of God. I was thinking about this in the week. You know, the world will promise us a lot. I mean, you know, right now, the Christmas ads are brilliant, aren't they, on the telly? And <laughs> the world will promise you a lot. Live this way, and this is how it will be. Everything will be wonderful. Watch a few Disney films. The world will promise you a lot. I want to build my life on the promises of God, not the promises of the world. Get a little bit more ouchy now. Are you building your life on yourself? or on others, or are you building your life on God? Because there is a difference. There is a difference. Am I living life according to Sarah and what Sarah thinks? Can I tell you something? My mind is busy. I have a busy mind. (laughs) Anyone else? I have a busy mind. I have a busy heart. It's just the way I'm wired. Some of you aren't wired quite so much like that. I envy you. I'd like to have five minutes in your mind. (laughs) I have a busy mind. I have a busy heart. I don't trust myself. Can you hear me this morning? If I live according to the values of Sarah, oh boy, boy. Like, I think I'm a pretty decent human being, but I don't trust myself. Is anyone hearing me this morning? I don't want to live according to self, the gospel according to Sarah Weber. I want to live the gospel according to Jesus Christ. So who's the foundation? How do I know that I'm building my life on God? I know it by knowing his word. I don't make it up as I go along. We live in a world right now that just says, make it up as you go along. Respond to your feelings. It is not a gospel of feelings. It's a gospel of truth according to the word of the Lord. According to the word of the Lord. How can we know if we don't read it? Are we building a life on sin or are we building a life on holiness? The choice is ours. You you, want to know, read the Bible. Read the Bible. Read the Bible. What does God say? I stood here the other week talking about the Samaritan woman, didn't I? Trying to reframe that story for us in our minds and understand that that Jesus wasn't highlighting this lady's sin. But I want to tell you, and I said it on that Sunday, Jesus had no problem pointing out people's lifestyle that was not right at other times. 
pointed it out. He said, it's not right. Go and sin no more. Then come follow me. What are we building our life on? What's the foundation? Are we building our life on lies or are we building our life on truth? Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then we have Acts, which records the early church, and, and, and Acts is a great book. It's quite a fast-paced book to read, and it, uh, an action book. It just describes the early church and all the missional activity that went on. And, and, and then we get to Romans and Corinthians and Philippians and Colossians, and what are all these books? The New Testament is full of pastoral letters pastoral letters to churches. Paul wrote most of them, Peter's written, uh, Peter's epistles there. We've got James, he wrote one. And, 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 and if you know the New Testament, you will know this. The New Testament is mainly pastoral letters, letters that would be written. Oh, imagine getting one of these letters. And yet these letters, just like Jesus' teaching, they are constant encouragements for how we grow as Christians. Can I read you, well, I say can I, if you say no, I don't know what I'm going to do, because I'm going to do it, aren't I? <laughs> um, bear with. It's all, it's all on my phone. Um, I, I just want to read you, in fact, I think I'm just going to read and, and try and not say too much. Do you believe me? Yeah, I heard that, I heard that. I just want God's word to land on us. Um, pastoral letters where all the writers are literally saying to these Christians, know the word of God, be rooted in him. Paul says this in Colossians, just as you received Jesus Christ as your Lord, so now walk in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith, just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. Paul's saying, Know this book, know the scriptures, know the word of the Lord. In 1 Peter 2 verse 2, he says this, Like newborn infants long for the pure spiritual milk, that by it you may grow up into salvation. Another message from Paul to the church in Colossae, he says this, And so from the day that we heard, we have not stopped praying for you, asking that you might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding so that you might walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, bearing fruit. Uh, it, Paul says this to Timothy, until I come and visit you, devote yourself to the public reading of scripture, to exhortation and to teaching. Don't neglect the gift that you have. Romans 12, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Do you know how that happens? It happens by, with the power of the Holy Spirit sitting under the truth of God's word and allowing it to transform us. All I'm doing today is reminding us of some of this basic stuff. Ephesians 4, uh, Paul describes the church and the way it's made up. And he, and he says this, he's talking about the gifts of the church that are given, that we might be built up, that we might know more about God. He says that we might no longer be children tossed around by the waves. He's, he's describing a storm again. If we know the truth, we won't be tossed around here, there, and everywhere, but we will remain firm. He goes on to say this, the waves, um, you won't be carried away by the waves uh, and every wind of doctrine and human cunning by the craftiness of deceitful schemes. In other words, he says, you'll stand strong on the truth. You won't be carried away by crazy teaching and thinking. Another verse in Colossians, be rooted and built up in him, established in the faith just as you were taught. Are you hearing me this morning? I don't know if I should just give you a couple more. I've got so many here. Listen to this verse about the Word of God. Hebrews 4, the Word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword. goes on. Some of these scriptures, you know them so well. The writers to the early church were saying, be devoted, get rooted, go deep in God's Word because it will hold you strong. A couple more things I want to say before I wrap up. A few, a few weeks ago, we had a, a ladies' conference, and um, Lindsay Bruce from Scotland was here, and she brought a brilliant word. 
I'd, I'd like to make it available to us. I might see if I can do that. MJ, can you help me? Because I haven't prepared this. Just put a little bit of soil in that for me. But this is what she said, and it landed on me so deep. She said to us all on that day, she said, you don't need more faith. She said, too many of us are looking at our circumstances and saying, I need more faith. She said, you don't need more faith. You need more intentionality. And she began to talk. I should have prepared this earlier, but hey. It's all right, don't worry, that'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. That'll do. She began to talk about, so here's a pot of soil. And, and she began to use, I mean, of course, you know, Jesus talked about this, didn't he, in his parable of the, the farmer and the sower. But she began to say this. She said, it's not more faith that you need, but we do need more intentionality. You see, if we want to grow as followers of Jesus, Kez, can you open that for me? We need to intentionally take seed. What is seed? It's the word of God, and we need to plant it. And I don't know about you, but I just wonder if some of us have forgotten some of this basic stuff. I wonder if some of us have just thought, oh, it will just happen as if by magic. Thanks, Kez. As if by magic, I'll just grow as a Christian. <laughs> it's not what the Bible says. The Bible says, take the seed and intentionally, don't you just love the mess I'm making here? Intentionally plant it. Bed it down. If I was organized enough, I'd have a watering can here. <laughs> Water it. Some of you can see I'm a great gardener, can't you? You're loving it. It's brilliant. It's brilliant. Oh, thank you. Look at that. He's been helping me for 30 years now. <laughs> so don't stop, Josh. Don't stop me. I need all the help I can get. This and it's, a, it's just an illustration. Jesus used it, right? <laughs> Take the seed. This. Where do you plant it? Not out there, here. Intentionally plant it. Intentionally plant it in your life. Be intentional about it. It won't just happen. We need habits in our life that will help us grow. The book of Acts that I've just described, and, and it literally just tells the story of the church. Jesus has gone to heaven and his disciples are left. And in Acts chapter 2 and, and sort of 3 and 4, really, that first bit of the book, but Acts chapter 2 especially, we read about the Holy Spirit being poured out on the church. And then we read what I think is a wonderful description. It's a model for Christian living, for, for the church. It's a model for discipleship. And in Acts chapter 2, we see, I think, three things that I want to just nudge us with again today. Three things for how this early community grew together. The first thing is this, is that they were together. The Bible says they met together in one place. At the end of Acts chapter 2, it talks about them meeting regularly. If you are to grow as a Christian, you're not going to do it on your own. We need one another. It's community. We do this together. These are all extra things that I could talk about. You've heard us say recently in the last few months... Our faith was never meant to be individual. <laughs> it's together. We learn in community. Do you know you read the Bible best in community? We learn together. We pray together in community. The second thing that we see in the book of Acts, Acts chapter 2, so they're together. Say that with me, together. Second thing is that they had the Holy Spirit. We, we can't do any of this without the Holy Spirit. Don't, I want to suggest to you, don't even attempt to read the Bible without asking first, Holy Spirit, will you help me? Don't even attempt it, because I don't know about you, maybe you're a lot cleverer than me, but I don't understand it. Like, I have to go, Holy Spirit, help me. They were together. They had the power of the Holy Spirit. And the second thing, the third thing that we see in Acts is that they devoted themselves. They devoted themselves to teaching, to prayer, to breaking bread, and to fellowship. And I want to tell you, Harbour Church, the model has not changed. And so with that in mind, I want to just share with you some practical things that we want to do as a church in the new year. Because I want to stir our hearts again to say, church, it's time to grow. It's time to be intentional about putting some seed in. And, and it's time to say, do you know what? I'm, I'm actually going to think about the foundation that I'm building my life on. And so we want to do this together. We, we want to do it with the Holy Spirit's help. And we want to devote ourselves to teaching. And so for just a few months now, we've just been really aware of this and wanting to, again, very intentionally offer us as a church community some 
just a variety, just a few things that will help us in the new year to really focus on learning the Bible more and understanding his word. So let's put this thing on the screen because I want to talk through um, very, very quickly. And today's just the first Sunday that I'm just letting you know about this. And then over the coming weeks, we're going to talk about it more. But is the image ready to go up on the screen? Is that all right? Say that again. Okay, guys, is that all right? Can you put, put the, uh, that would be fantastic. Thank you. So here's what's going to happen. Um, in the new year, from January through to Easter, we're going to just offer us all as a church, all of us, myself included, we're going to journey together in just saying we want to be a little bit more intentional about growing as disciples and as followers of Jesus. So we're going to offer some things in the new year. We're going to begin in January with prayer. If you've been part of Harbour Church for a while, you know that that's what we do every new year. So we're going to begin in the new year with prayer. But there's some of the things we want to offer. The first thing I'm going to talk about is that we want to offer a Bible school. And so what's going to happen is that from uh, sort of end of January through to till Easter, through to April, we are going to offer here, it's going to be a mixture of Wednesday nights and Thursday nights. We have our very own Bible school teacher, because he does teach at a Bible school, Gareth, who's going to be doing four weeks of teaching, the teaching that he does at the Bible school, we're going to hear it here. Um, we're also going to be having a guy called Stuart, Stuart Mayo, he's a pastor in Tunbridge Wells, he also lectures at a Bible college, and he's going to come here as well and give us four Wednesday nights, which is fantastic, four Wednesday nights, I think he's coming in March, I can't quite remember all the dates of it all, but he's going to be coming as well, so we're going to have four from Gareth, a couple of weeks break to catch a breath, and then four from Stuart, brilliant Bible teaching. And so this is a Bible school. If you want to sign up for that, you can come along. There's no essays or any of that stuff, but it's a chance just to go a little bit deeper, a little bit deeper than we get a chance to in our connect groups, a little bit deeper than we get a chance to on a Sunday morning. The second thing, and I'm, and I'm personally really excited about this because the person who's coming is a friend of mine. Um, how many of you were in the church when years ago we had a course called Psalmody? Any of you remember that? Some of you do, back in Harvey Street days. Um, so Psalmody was a 10-week course that literally taught us about praise and worship. I don't know if you were in the church a few months ago when I suddenly got a little bit excited and started telling you about a Hebrew word called yada. And it means that it's like literally throwing a basketball, that when we lift our hands up in praise, the word for that is yada. Do you remember me doing that and I get a little bit excited? All right, I learned that because I did psalmody. And there's other words that talk about praise and worship. Why do we lift our hands? Why do we kneel? Why do we sing? Lifestyle worship. Why do we do the things we do? And a good friend of mine called Ruth, she is going to come and she is going to teach that. It's not going to be 10 weeks. She's going to give us four Sunday evenings. All right, so she's reduced this course down to four weeks. It will be brilliant. <laughs> I really mean that. I, I want to encourage you to be here on a Sunday night during February. Um, it'll be like about an hour and a half. Ruth is full of life, full of energy. She'll lead us in worship, um, but she will teach us. She will teach us what does the Bible say about praise and worship. So we've got a Bible school. We've got, um, we're calling it lifestyle worship, but that's going to be happening. Um, we also are going to be running a course and it's called Deep Calls to Deep and it is literally a study through the Psalms. A beautiful, very devotional, very devotional, reflective, allowing space for us to read and understand some of the Psalms, especially the Psalms of lament, the Psalms that actually draw us to God and help us understand some of the struggles and the pain and the suffering that we go through. The Bible wants to help us with that. And so we are hugely grateful that Dave Williams and Kathy is going to be helping him, that Dave is going to be running this course called Deep Calls to Deep. It's going to be on Tuesdays. He's going to run two, one in the day, one in the evening. And so if you can't make an evening, you might want to come in the day. It's going to be fantastic. We've already had a taster session, and it was brilliant. Like, really brilliant. My problem is I want to do all of it, okay? Um, and maybe I can. I don't know. But uh, this is going to be running on Tuesday evenings, Deep Calls to Deep. And then the last thing, or is that all of it? That is all of it. I'm only going to throw this out. We might, if, if there's more sign up, but um, possibly put on a book club, a book group. Mary Jane's pretty keen to do that, where we literally just take a book and study it together. So that, that may happen, but we'll start with this first of all. So what's going to happen is over the coming weeks, there's going to be opportunity to sign up and to say, yeah, I really want to be a part of this. I really want to intentionally begin the year. You might be sitting there going, how am I going to do that and my connect group? I can't fit it all in. 
between January and April, we're going to be pausing on the Connect Group gatherings. Connect Groups won't stop because they're primarily pastoral. So we will keep, Connect Groups will still happen. You'll still be like pastorally in your Connect Groups. Maybe your Connect Groups will meet up for dinners or something like that. But we won't be meeting with a regular pattern of Connect Group. That's going to stop to enable us as a whole church to do this. And do you know what I'm excited about? I'm excited about us getting to know some other people. Yeah, because some of us have been in the same Connect Group forever. And actually, it's quite nice to be able to go, oh, I'd like to have a little chat with Candy every now and again. Or I'd like to sit with Doreen and go through something. Or, you know, Aaron, maybe I'd like... No, no, I'm joking. I'm totally joking. I'd love to sit with you. Should we do the, Bi- should we do the Bible school together? Let's do, let's do the Bible school together. So it just gives us opportunity to grow as a church. Dave, could you come up? Is that okay? I'd like us to return to the song that we were just singing. Lord, I come to you because the, the second verse, if we can just sing this one, says, Lord, renew my mind. Lord, renew my mind. And just as, as the musicians just start to play, I want to read a few verses. I'd like you to close your eyes, actually. Because my prayer is that we just, we, we just fall in love with God's word. We want his word more than anything. And I just want to read you some verses that speak about a love for God's word. So just just close your eyes. Just listen to these words as I read them. Allow them to stir your own spirit. Isaiah says this, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Psalm 19 We read this, the law of the Lord is perfect. Revive in the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. More words in the psalm. Just listen to these beautiful, poetical words. Your eternal word, O Lord, stands firm in heaven. Your faithfulness extends to every generation. Your regulations remain true to this day, for everything serves your plans. If your instructions hadn't sustained me with joy, I would have died in my misery. I will never forget your commandments, for by them you give me life oh how I love your instructions I think about them all day long your commands make me wiser than my enemies for they are my constant guide how sweet your words taste to me they are sweeter than honey your commandments give me understanding Your word is a lamp to guide my feet and is a light for my path. I've promised it once and I'll promise it again. I will obey your righteous regulations. Your laws are my treasure. They are my heart's delight. Would you do me a favor? If you've got a physical Bible, would you just hold it? Maybe you are already. If it's on your phone, just do that. Oh, Holy Spirit, just, would you just right now just say, Holy Spirit, I want to fall in love with this book. I want to fall in love. If it's on your phone, just hold your phone. It's okay. Just say, Holy Spirit, as we step into a new year soon, you know, as of next week, it's all going to be Christmassy. We're going to be launched into Advent. This feels like the last Sunday where we're kind of not doing all Christmassy stuff for us to begin to prepare our minds for January, New Year. And I wonder if we can make a determination. The, the, the psalmist, I just read it, said, I promised it once and I'll promise it again. I, I don't know. Was there a time in your life where you held this book and you promised, Lord Jesus, with all my heart, I'm going to do my best to live according to your word. Can you promise it again? Can you take hold of this book and say, I promised it once, Jesus. I'm going to promise it again. I'm going to promise it again. Just keep holding the book. Say, Jesus, I want to love your word. Your laws are my treasure. They are my heart's delight. Your laws are wonderful. No wonder I obey them. 
Your word gives light so even the simple can understand. Oh, how I long with expectation for your commands. Come and teach me what to do. Guide my steps by your word. Hmm. Jesus, Jesus. The instructions of the Lord are perfect. Why don't you just say that word with me? Perfect. Revive in the soul. They're more desirable than gold, even the finest gold. Jesus said these words, they're recorded in Luke. He said, my mother and my brothers are those who hear the word of God and do it. May we be people, Harbour Church, who hear the word of God and do it. Jesus went on to say these words. He talked about seed fallen on good soil and he said if you hear and accept God's word you will produce a harvest of 30 60 or even a hundred times what has been planted you know as I've just fumbly planted a little seed in this and made a right bodge job of it but you got the point I want to be someone who plants a seed of God in my life and sees a harvest do you plant the seed and let's see a harvest your word O oh Lord is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Let's just remain seated as we just sing as a prayer. Lord, renew my mind. Just keep holding your Bible. Just, Lord, renew my mind. Renew my mind. Renew my mind, God. Don't conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will know what is good and pleasing to the Lord. I want to be a follower of Jesus that that lives according to God's way. God, as we enter into a new year, may we be intentional in planting seed in our lives again. Help us, God, to do this. Lord, renew my mind. Lord, unveil my eyes. Let me see you face. Let me see you face. To face the knowledge of your love. I know the time's gone, but I just want us to sing this just one more time, just this bit, this prayer. And I want to invite you to stand to your feet and that together we say, Lord, we want to be a people who are committed to sit under the teaching of you. Lord Jesus, you are the greatest teacher. I want to urge you, if you need to say to God this morning, Lord, I'm sorry if I've neglected your word. I'm sorry if I've become over familiar with it. I'm sorry if I've started to, I'm going to use this word, abuse it, misuse it. I'm sorry if I've started to come up with my own translations and understandings of it. God, I want to be someone who is diligent in sitting under the teaching of your word. Yeah, come on. Can we begin to say amen to that? I would, it would be so easy for me just to stand here and say this stuff doesn't matter. 
We live in an instant world that just wants to say, take a tablet and it'll all be all right. Do this, quick fix it, it'll all be all right. I, I can't tell you that. I'd be lying to you. Jesus himself said, if you want to live wisely, build your life and live out what I say. There is only one way to know what he says. We've got to read it. We've got to study it. We've got to know the word of God so that in our moments of storm, we don't crash, but we stand. And our world is crying out for a church that will stand. Your neighbour needs you to stand. There are people in this community that need Harbour Church to stand. Because if we don't stand, who will stand? If we don't know the truth that brings freedom, who will? Seriously, some of us have, have, have we've delegated it to our unsaved neighbours and friends and family. It's us. It's our responsibility. We carry the authority of the Word of God. And if we don't do it, who will? If we don't speak truth over our children and our young people, who will? Don't delegate it. Own it. Grow in it. And let's be disciples of Jesus. Come on, let's sing one more time. Lord, unveil my eyes. Lord, unveil my eyes. Lord, I want to see you face. Wow, it's been good this morning. It's been good to be together. Just thinking about the line in that song, As I Wait. Of course, that's what Advent's all about, isn't it? Which kicks off next Sunday, waiting for Jesus to come. But of course, we're always in Advent, aren't we? Because we're waiting for him to come back again. And that's uh, just such an exciting thing. Wow, we're going to finish there. Let me remind you of how we started this morning with Psalm 100. Quite easy to remember Psalm 100. You know, Sarah's been encouraging us to go and read the Bible. If you can't remember something, Psalm 100, you won't forget that, will you? Five verses. Here's the fifth one as we finish and head to tea and coffee and catching up with one another. For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Amen. Amen. Have a great week, everyone. Take care.